My name is JT, and this is a story about how I built my homestead. Hey guys, uh, JT here. Welcome back to another episode of JT Time. Uh, I'm in more casual clothes today because uh, it's really wet out here. Uh, we had a pretty big downpour last night and um, we don't have any um, or I, I can't I can't work on this wet, wet kind of floor at least I don't want to um, being a little baby sorry um, but what I do have for today's episode is I kind of got rained out last time on the garden um, that I was working on uh, right behind me and I didn't really get to give you guys a really nice tour. So let me go ahead and give you a nice tour of this little like raised bed that I have. And of course, I am planning on getting a much or building this out a little bit more. Um, but for now, I, this is kind of what we have just because I'm not over here 24-7. Uh, you know, we're not living here yet. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive right into it. And I, kinda, I can kind of show you what, uh, what I did here. All right. All right. So we're looking at uh, the trellis um, from the patio that uh, I had poured before we started construction on the, the, the framing of the house. Uh, and essentially, I actually cut these, remember I cut those posts, those four posts, all the same length. So really the only reason why there's a slope here is because I, I buried those a little bit more. And the grade is also going down a little bit more on this. So it kind of slopes this way towards the greenhouse. Now this is just a skeleton. I do plan on putting some accents here and building this out a little bit, at least the top side of it a little bit more. So it looks a little bit more decorative, maybe putting like a hidden Mickey or two into it. Um, but for now, it's functional and that's kind of what I was going for. Um, but let's look at the raised bed uh, real quick. Or actually before I look at the raised bed, let's, let's actually just finish explaining how this is all connected together, right? So. I, the last part of the video of the, the previous episode, I showed you guys how I glued those on and then I screwed them in. I pretty much used about two, four, six, seven, seven to eight screws on every single um, connection point. Uh, same thing right here. I did the same thing there. Also, when you bury them down into the ground, the ground has a little bit of, uh, it has enough strength to kind of hold the post upright, but not enough to really kind of keep it I guess stationary and upright because uh, over time wind could blow the, the fruit and stuff and, and the vegetables can um, cause this to weigh down so I reinforced it with this 2 by 8 right here and all I did to kind of do this was I could have chiseled this in and kind of embedded it a little bit more kind of like the way I did for the top side but I don't got time for that. It was raining. When I, it was raining whenever I was uh, working on this anyway. So I did it the quick way, which is I cut the same width uh, for the post as the as the bottom part of the post. And all I did was I wood glued this, and then I screw I pre sunk all these screws into it um, so that I could cover it up afterwards. That way, it actually looks. A little nicer I mean I could cover this up with hardy if I really wanted to as well that would be really nice because the hardy would kind of preserve it but the glue is holding this like glue is holding that up there and the screws are also holding it in place as well um, after I built the post I pretty much bought this at my local home store this is um, all this is is uh, it's just a wire mesh really and it's I think I bought it it was four feet wide by a hundred feet in length and it's it was cheap <laughs> it was um, $60 I think uh, I, I saw some YouTube videos where they made this out of string instead and yeah that's a great solution um, you know the strings cheap too you can get a couple hundred yards for a couple bucks but you gotta spend time like running the string from here all the way over there and you have to drill holes or, or have a way to fasten the strings and the strings you know over time it can actually deteriorate and uh, and break so i just didn't want to deal with that later on in the future so i, I kind of just wanted to um use this instead it's a little bit more permanent it's a little bit easier to use and let me show you how i actually fasten them down so at the bottom 
uh, I pretty much just put it down. I, I, I put the uh, mesh down and I stapled it. So you can see staples here, 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 um, and, and so forth. And it's a little excessive, but at the same time, I, I'm expecting this to be pretty heavy or carry a lot of weight. So I went ahead and stapled it all, and then I ran it up. <clears throat> it goes over this 2 by 8 right there, and I stapled the very top of it. And then I ran it over here, and I stapled the top of it again. And then the very last side of it, I stapled this side right here which is kind of just periodically horizontal and vertical or yeah horizontal and vertical yeah um so and then i kind of curled it over i didn't have to curl it over i honestly could have just i had i accidentally cut it a little long i could have just clipped it and i might end up doing that depending on how i decorate this but again you, you can imagine me i was getting rained on i was getting wet and I was just trying to figure out a way to get it done. So you can see the middle one actually cuts to kind of the right length where I can cover this up afterwards because this needs to all be covered up to, to get cleaned up essentially. Um, and I may use hardy board for that. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm, I'm Ideally, I would like it to tie into the house and make it feel like it's actually part of the house. And I have extra hardy board anyways, so I might um, just clad it with hardy board and clad just means put it on the X outside of it so it covers up all the wood beams um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it with that I think the only other detail I kind of touched up on uh, in last episode was <clears throat> this right here I I ended up I wanted a way to kind of um, anchor this entire structure down so I, I anchored it here to the actual um, uh, raised bed and you can see I didn't make the screws very pretty. <laughs> Again, it was raining, so I was just kind of like, shoot them in as quickly as I can. <laughs> and and I, I, I can cover that up later, you know. I'm going to put clad on this anyways. So this is all going to get covered up to, to look a little bit better. But let's, let's actually look at the garden now. Because um, I, I haven't really touched very much on the garden, right? So... <clears throat> saw garlic right here and uh, interesting fact I actually read somewhere um, I don't remember the exact uh, literature or what it said um, but essentially you'll notice here that there's garlic around the outside garlic on the outside of this as well and then in the middle it's kind of sporadic right we got one garlic there 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 we have another one a small one there and then it kind of just empties out here and did I forget to plant garlic there um, no, I didn't forget to put garlic there. I did put garlic there, and I know I did. So why isn't the garlic growing in that little section? Well, did a little bit of research, and I found out that um, I actually planted, not the, not the research, but I actually planted two different garlics here. Uh, one of the garlics I planted was from a farmer's market. Uh, they were really nice sliced cloves, so I was really excited about doing that, replicating those, because I really want that type of garlic. It was really, really big. I don't know, I'm not a professional gar uh, gardener, so I didn't know the name of that garlic that they used, but I'll show it to you when I pick these up uh, or harvest them later. But the other garlic that I used in here was mainly because, not by choice, it was actually because I only had so much of the garlic from the from the farmer's market. <laughs> so uh, I had more than enough space to plant more. So I was like, let's just go ahead and just pick some up from the grocery store. So I picked up some organic garlic from um, Whole Foods and planted those down here. Well, I found out that the garlic at the grocery store has something on it that actually prevents it from continuing to um, sprout to a new garlic so I planted those in this garden unknowingly and um, after the fact realized that no they're not gonna grow and you can see that they did not grow um, I do have a few that did end up growing and that could be because maybe those didn't make contact with the chemical that they use um, even though it's organic right that's interesting though right it's kind of it goes down to what's the idea of organic because something can be organic 
and don't quote me on this, I, I don't know for sure, but I've heard that something can be organically grown, but not organically processed. And this is a post-process kind of um, topic uh, where the, the garlic itself was grown organically, but they sprayed something on it after it was pulled out of the ground and processed and got ready for the store to keep it from sprouting, you know? And, and I think that's just for decorative, not decorative purposes, but just to, ease the mind of the client that's or the customer that may be buying that garlic because most people don't want to buy garlic that's sprouting on the end of it right so um you know lesson learned there not don't plant garlic from the grocery store unless you know whether it's um it's been treated with that chemical or not and uh, you can see you know that like the ones that are smaller like that smaller right there so that's probably the garlic from the store that's probably the garlic from the store too um that's another one that's probably from the store and then i got like maybe two more like one right there one right there and one right there that's probably from the store as well and i i, I do believe those are from the store because you can tell the one from the farmer's market look how much bigger that stock is it's like the size that's bigger than my thumb you know whereas like if i go over here this is smaller than my thumb. <laughs> that's how small this stock is. So, <clears throat> that's my garlic. And um, you may be asking, what am I growing on these trellises, right? Definitely not garlic. Garlic doesn't grow on trellises. But we got this type of squash. These are all squashes, so they're all viney type of, um, of, uh, of plants. Oh man, I don't know what's going on there. See if I can peel that off. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So these are all different kinds of squashes. So um, I don't, I put the labels back here. Oh, acorn squash. So these are acorn squashes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely amateur hour when it comes to planting this kind of stuff. Uh, that right there, that there's four of them. There's one, two, three, four. Those are butternut squashes. Um, you can see that they are... The leaves are yellow, um, which I've done some reading and, and uh, usually yellow leaves indicates uh, possible root, um, root uh, infection uh, or, or issues with the roots. Um, so I don't know uh, if we're gonna have issues with those or not. I don't have time to be out here, so I just stuck them in the ground and hoping for the best kind of deal. Uh, um, this right here, there's one right there, two, three, four, five six seven eight uh those are honeydew melons so i love honeydew melon and uh this particular one actually i bought from the store so i uh, i thought it was really really sweet and i actually uh, kept the seeds for this melon uh, it was organic and i just stuck them in the ground so hoping for the best that i actually get that um this right here is uh, yellow squash. So there's one, two, three, four. Uh, I think there's just four of them. It's yellow squash. And then this over here is zucchini. So there should be four of them. One, two, three, and then maybe four right there. Uh, zucchini. Again, the yellow, I don't know if it's just because I didn't water them when I stuck them down in the ground. So they're probably hurting right now. But um, you can see they're kind of doing well now, you know, even though the yellow leaves are dying away, that more leaves are coming out now. And then look at this guy. This guy has like flowering happening right here already. That's crazy. And it's, it's just that two leaves and it has flowers. Same here. Flowers already, you know, we got flowers going right there. Yeah. So I am, I am excited. It's not normal that zucchini and yellow squash grow on trellises so i'm gonna have to come over here like maybe once a week and help train it to go up the uh up the trellis uh, which i'll just use string and kind of tie it and help it go up and continue cutting off the leaves as it gets uh, taller and taller so that it promotes it to continue growing up um but you know it's i, I I'm, I'm excited about that uh, about getting that kind of fruit <laughs> And the very last thing I have here is, okay, so if I'm not over here every single day, how am I watering this? Um, so I have here uh, a, a, a water hose that I've ran all the way to the side of the house, essentially. Um, the water tie-in only got one in the house because it's still coming from the service and it's not tied into the house yet. 
and, and uh, it's just one water spout for contractors to wash their hands. So I split that, which I'll go run over there and show you this, um, but I split it and then ran a garden hose from here all the way to here. And this is PVC pipe that I actually made at the rental property. We're no longer using this, so I went ahead and just repurposed it uh, for this house. And all this is, is it's just a hose tie-in point, a uh, ball valve, so this just turns it on or turns it off um, with uh, 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 a quarter turn. And then a T. <clears throat> and all this is really for, the reason why I have this capped off here is in the event that I ever wanna cut into this and then splice it and extend this to other raised beds or anything like that you know as as the garden evolves i may want to grow this and continue growing it but essentially it goes down <clears throat> over and then pops up with a sprinkler system hose it's a pretty cheap setup i think i paid maybe i don't know 30 35 dollars for it and i mean <clears throat> thinking now 35 dollars is probably pretty expensive for this but at that time i was like ah oh, 35 dollars is not that bad <laughs> uh anyways so yeah that that's kind of what um is watering my garden right now so every single day this is on a timer every single day it uh waters it at probably 7 a.m in the morning and for about 15 minutes um so all this is getting some kind of water but you can see it's still damp from the the rain that we saw last night so i'll meet you guys for the last part of the video which is out front um near the uh near the uh the water hose where I split it so I could show you how I did that and uh, I'll end it there. All right, see y'all real soon. All right, so last part of the video. <clears throat> so this line right here goes down into the ground and then goes down all the way out to the street and there's the meter out there. So essentially this is where it ties into the house. Um, the actual tie-in for the house is not here. You can see that there's no line that goes into the house. This is just where the original plumber set the pipe so that we have water to wash our hands with, um, you know, rinse stuff off with, and, and essentially a way to actually get water on the site. So I've split this. This hose right here is really, really short. It's only like five feet long, and it's only meant to like fill up buckets or anything, anything you want to fill up or even wash your hands. Whereas this side is where I'm actually sending the water hose to the back of the yard and this is like 200 foot water hoses together because this whole line stretches like 75 feet or something like that so that that goes to the back and then this timer uh it keeps the um current time start time how often how long and then i can even manually operate it so if i wanted to manually operate it uh, i just hit the manual button and you can kind of hear it click on you see it clicked on um so but i'm not gonna do manual I, I don't need it doesn't need any more water so i'm gonna go ahead and turn that off you can see that black line there right so it turns off and the program's still on you can see the <clears throat> you can see that black line for program and then if we have low battery which i did before um i installed this this was low battery i decided to change the battery out there's a black line that goes here for low battery cases but it's a pretty simple system and it works so I'm happy about that. Uh, this is on pretty much and it is almost getting to summer so I'm not worried about this freezing or anything like that but next winter if this is still here which I hope it's not because that would be a bad sign. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll have to worry about it freezing but the actual tie-in point so what the electrician will do is he'll probably cut this down dig down and then he'll dig a trench from here to right there and that line right there is where the water intake for the house actually is so of course you have your um, shut off valve right here <clears throat> this bolt probably needs to be painted otherwise it's just going to continue rusting um, but yeah water water tie-ins right here and um, right there that hose is just a uh, a, a a water um, man what is that called it's for our home our whole house water filter um it's a it's for a pail that's underneath the water filter that um in case the system leaks it'll drain oh so it's a drain drain hose <laughs> for our water filtration system for the house so the reason why i'm walking to the front entrance though is 
I think the, earlier I showed you this bucket. Um, this is kind of what we came up with, you know. It's just a quick exterior bucket around the brick. So you got caulking around there, and then we're gonna paint this white. And uh, it's it's functional. It works really really well, right? Like I can get access to this now and plug it in. Um, so I, I'm happy with that. It's a little lopsided, but that's again, uh, you know. Unless you're really, really looking at it, you probably won't notice it, to be honest. Um, it does annoy me, of course, so I'm, I've been trying to think of a way to, to either correct it or make it look less lopsided. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see. I may end up just being like, screw it. I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna leave it there. But um, that's it for me today, guys. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. See you all real soon. Here on JT time.